If your goal is just to make money, I think that's a bad approach. Hey, what's up, vlog? A uh, couple things today. Uh, we're gonna meet up with Adam today and in order to figure out a little bit more about what he wants to do in terms of being an influencer and how we can move that in a positive direction and uh, grow his presence. And also, uh, we're on a business venture, see what type of business venture we can uh, drum up in order to uh, be more successful ourselves. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna go to his compound and figure some stuff out like that. Then we're gonna meet up with a guy later on today who's a marketer and learning a little bit more about uh, the marketing aspects of things and maybe some ways I can improve my business on marketing as well. So stay tuned for that, all right? I got into media because I started understanding that, you know, media shapes the minds of culture. You know, it's, it's reached by billions of people. I mean, just look at, you know, social media, you know, or, you know, video, video content. Video content is reached by billions of people. Doesn't matter any other format, other formats, you might reach 100,000 people or millions in books, for example, millions of people. But it's no competition when it comes to video format. Video for format reach billions of people, you know? Um, think of some of the most highest selling books, you know, Harry Potter, for example. Now, don't get me wrong, it's reached a lot of people, but, the movies took it to a whole nother level. And it's just the same thing. Anytime you go into to video format, you go to another level. So books reaches millions of people, but media reaches billions of people. It's just a bigger impact. And respecting that process of the groundwork of putting years of work in, in order to get to that level, really put you in a position to understand more about how to, to cherish that impact, how to, to really create content that is purposeful um, and content that's really gonna have a positive impact on, on people's lives. So when COVID hit, um, we locked the gate. So you can see- Is this a Gran Turismo? Yeah. It's my baby. And then uh, we have this farm over here. And the goal is we're actually ramping it up to provide food for a hundred families. So we're gonna start donating food in the area. Because you know what it's like when you're poor, money don't help you because the money hits the bank account and then it gets eaten by the bank. Yeah. But you give somebody groceries and now you're actually helping people. Yeah. Hi. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, man. How many chickens you said you got? About 50? 50, yeah. What kind of animals free for all go over here? Uh, I, I mean, just seen something. Uh, we've got buzzards, we've got cows, I mean, there's bulls, there's all sorts. Tons of stuff. Uh, we get wild pigs for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we get wild pigs, uh, snakes. I really want to see them. Uh, see a wild pig? Yeah. Dude, they won't come out during the day, nighttime. Until yeah. we put the fences up, we would get like 20. I remember you used running. to tell me. Yeah. 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 I, crazy. That's where I do all my video trainings from. That's where I outline all my strategies. That's where my intern sits if he's learning to paint. That's where I paint. <laughs> The more wrong you are means the more right you are. 
And what I mean by that is, when you're wrong, that means you made a decision. And when you make a decision, and then you understand that you were incorrect in the information that you had, that gives you an opportunity to learn more. And therefore, you're no longer wrong anymore, you're now right. So, the more wrong you are, means the more right you are. Remember that. I am, I'm gonna call you tomorrow. And then uh, that proposal for exactly how we're gonna work together okay. for Psychology Hacker yeah. is gonna be sent. And then what we'll do is we'll figure out a, a good schedule that works out to be shooting the videos. And then we'll go from there. Dude, fuck yeah. All right, so man. Appreciate you. Thank you, Travis. All right, man. I just finished up a meeting and uh, got done really discussing on how we're gonna move forward in the influencer route and really moving his business forward specifically in growing it, the platform, um, and how my company can help his company do that. Never underestimate the value of meeting clients face to face, of being able to shake their hands, look them in the eye, and see the passion and what they actually want to do. Uh, fortunately, I was able to do that with Adam on his 40 acre land, you know, just, Thinking about that just gets me to thinking about the importance of being self-sufficient, self-sustaining. Just had a quick meeting, got done with that, and now it's on to the next one. I think the problem is there's just so many bad marketers and so many people in the industry that don't have, uh, they don't have you know a lot of good intentions. And you can tell people's intentions by <laughs> either what they're selling, because they're selling a bunch of stuff that people don't need, or they're trying to they're, they they're good at making you feel bad about your purchase. The the real thing about marketing it should be about whatever your passion is. So for example, I don't consider myself a marketer because I don't really market. In fact, only thing I do is I strategize what it's like to engage people on social media. So I think the in order to have a better relationship with marketing itself is, well, what are you really trying to market? And who are you really trying to market to? And if your goal is just to make money, I think that's a bad approach. And so if we get out of this mindset of just trying to make money and more in the mindset of how do I actually have an impact on people? How do I actually build people up? How do I actually help people? Then the entire industry of marketing can change because it goes from, I'm trying to sell you to I'm trying to help you. And that, I think, is probably the number one key to change in the marketing industry. All right, about to meet up with Peter. Um, he's a marketer here in Austin, Texas. And uh, yeah, man, just about to uh, bounce some ideas back and forth with them and uh, see if we can either work together or I can figure out how to get some gain from them and uh, incorporate some of that knowledge with uh, my business. So I always look at any anybody that I meet in terms of a business sense, look at it two ways. If I can't work with them, I try to get some sort of knowledge uh, to use in order to expand my business, grow my business, or to just utilize, period. Even if I can't do that, I still try to form a positive relationship with them in order to network. You know what I'm saying? So it's when you build up positive reputation, positive relationships with people, then somehow, some way, they, it always comes back to help you uh, in the long run. So yeah, that's what we're about to do right now. So what, what exactly do you do in marketing? And I would love to see if I could, you know, get some business done with you, man. Yeah, man. It's been, it's been a hot minute since we've done anything. Yeah. Seems like a shame because... Yeah, it's been a minute, man. I still do direct response primarily. Um, conversion optimization for, you know, a couple consulting clients these days. Partnered on a skincare company out of Australia. Um, so I'm CMO of that. And then uh, I still do write a good amount of copy. Mm -hmm. So scripts, ad copy, emails long form VSLs. So you do emails too? Yeah, everything, everything and anything. Primarily like 
health and wellness these days. You're still working with mostly influencers, right? Yeah. Yeah. What I like to call edutainment. Education stuff's always great, as long as it's not like too swarmy, you know, like the make money online stuff can get a little black hat. It's yeah. Like very, yeah. You know, make, make X number of dollars every week, like ridiculous claims. Yeah. And that shit, you know, at the end of the day, like, it doesn't fly past what I call the grandma test, which is, you know, if, if my grandma were alive and I was telling her what I was doing, one, I don't she have any idea what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but two, yeah. you know, is, yeah. is, is, are your family members going to, like, actually be proud of the shit you're working on, or is it just, like, stuff that you're doing to make money, right? Exactly. Purpose-driven. Yeah. Yeah. So, if it's just about the money, you're just gonna burn out. You call it the grandma test. I've never heard that before. <laughs> last I heard, you know, you were, uh, or last we talked, we, you were helping out a, a couple of influencers that really, you know, are focused more on, on the passion side of their impact. So like there's impact stuff, but if you're not, like I could go pick a, a nonprofit or charity or something to work with or start my own, but if I don't care about it, right? Or if it's not like the thing that lights me up, it's not really gonna have that much effect. Yeah, so I try to make sure that if I work with somebody, that it's someone I believe is gonna have a positive impact. Um, over the course of the last few years, I mean, I've worked with you know a ton of people. Um, obviously, I still work with a lot of the guys that you know I was working with before, but I like to make sure I continue to work with people I believe are making an impact. Um, and I, I think what I'm gonna do now is focus on like, 10 really good clients and then just go really hard on them and that's it i don't think i think i'm gonna do that just like focus on 10 solid clients and then just that's it it's a better approach than burning yourself out going too wide that's the mistake that i see a lot of guys say i did that you know a couple of years back too where i'm just like i'm taking on so much in so many different capacities but i like it's like half assing it right because you can yeah. You end up burning out because you're doing a whole bunch of stuff you don't care about. You get bogged down in the weeds. So yeah, dude, I love that. It's good to hear because yeah, you've, you've got a you got a superpower, man. What's the biggest email list you've ever had to deal with? Maybe like 1.3, 1.4 million. Shh. Most of them are between like 50,000 and a quarter million. That's pretty average for like physical consumables. What's the number one thing required? for a successful email campaign or a successful email strategy? That's a good question. Um, you're not gonna like the answer. <laughs> <laughs> There's no magic wand or silver bullet, and that's the thing. There's a bunch of guys that are promising you the world, like, I can 5X your email revenue, or I can get your, I can double your open rates, or you know, triple your click-throughs, or whatever, right? At the end of the day, the most effective way to be successful with any asset, not just email, could be a channel or on a platform, is just knowing your audience. What do they want? Why are they engaging with you, right? Why are they coming to you? Why are they watching your videos, opening your emails, engaging with your ads? If you're selling them something, if it's you know pretty heavy on, on buyer intent, like you're kind of hammering them with offers of some kind, you know, that's, that's on the one end of the spectrum versus, hey, I just provide a bunch of value and occasionally make an offer, yeah. right, to monetize. Two totally yeah. know, schools of thoughts and they can both be super effective. In the next couple of weeks, and we'll get some of the guys and go have a, have a drink or grab some coffee or something. Some Maybe you try to pull DG out of his hole. Yeah, let's do it, man. I'm, uh, I'm here every other week, man. All right, just wrap with Peter Hewlett. Um, just figuring out different ways to network, ways I can um be more fruitful with my marketing with my company and uh yeah man just seeing if we could bounce ideas around to to really do more together so um just got through wrapping that meeting up and one of the most important things i've always liked when working with the people i work with is it's always impact driven right you have to care about the people that you work with and you have to care about the people that you're trying to help that you have an impact with that's the reason why I've never been cool with the idea of just making money. These get rich quick schemes from people and all that, you know, that's not really the, that's not wavy at all. So yeah, always be mindful of who you work with, the people that have integrity, people that uh, really want to have an impact on people's lives and, and people that care actually about the consumers, the customers, um, 
and everybody you're trying to impact. So, yeah. All right. If you like this vlog, like, comment, subscribe.